So cooking with Thrive Life freeze-dried food just isn't as expensive as people think? That's right, and here's why. Okay. Hey everybody, I'm Bill. And I'm Elizabeth. Live simple. Live free. Thrive Life freeze-dried food. We love it. We use it all the time. And one of the comments that I get is, how can you uh, afford to use that expensive food all the time? Well, it's just not as expensive as you think. There's two things that I want to talk about here, um, about how it's actually a good deal. The first one is that you el completely eliminate waste when you use freeze-dried food, and when you do that, you save money. Several studies have been done that show that the average American household throws away anywhere between 25 up to 40% of the fresh food that they buy yeah. because of spoilage. And Thrive completely eliminates that. And so we want to demonstrate that to you. But then also Thrive Life is a great investment and hedge against inflation. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about that as well. So should we show them a, a really neat thing you can do? Absolutely. Okay. So let me show you here how we can make one lovely bowl of soup, a, a single serving, a really nice, nice lunch or a light supper. I have the uh, ingredients here. Um, we have peas and onion and broccoli and mushrooms and some diced beef, lovely stuff, and some um, freeze-dried potatoes, the potato dices, and some green beans. And we're just gonna put them all together and I get to use my beautiful little Pioneer Woman bowls. Um, I'm not gonna give you specific amounts um, because you can tell you don't need to use much. And um, it just depends on what you like. You just put more of what you do like and a little less of maybe what you don't like as much. But this will make up just a beautiful bowl of soup here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start out with my Thrive Life diced beef. And these seem like very small amounts, but it's just gonna make one serving. It's nice kind of putting them in the bowls because that way I don't accidentally just get too generous, <laughs> make a lot more than I thought I would. All right, so we've got some green beans. And I'm gonna put in the diced potatoes. These are freeze dried, so they're gonna refresh and it's just not gonna take that long. Probably the beef will need the most time and it's not gonna take that long to get it really ready. Some potatoes, peas, broccoli, wonderful little pieces of the florets. Now I want to go ahead and put in some oh, wonderful mushrooms. So my, my sister just loves opening up the mushrooms because it smells so wonderful. <laughs> and I'm going to put some onion in. I love onion. So there we go. And then um, I right now don't happen to have some uh, Thrive Life Beef Bouillon right here handy. I'm kind of getting situated down here in Florida. But I just got a lovely little bouillon cube here and I'm gonna put in some garlic because I love garlic. And see how hard that, I mean, I did more talking than pouring. See how hard that bowl of soup was to make? Couldn't be easier. I'm gonna stir this up a little bit and just show you what I have here. Now, when you have a mixture like this, not only can you just enjoy having a fresh, good bowl of soup at home, freshly cooked bowl of soup, but you could dump this into a Ziploc bag. And if you have some dishes you could use at work and a microwave or some way to heat um, water, like a, a coffee maker, you could just get hot water. Just put it in there and zip it up and you have a lovely lunch. It'll be prepared very quickly and you can have something like feels like real food, good fresh food. Um, if you have a wide mouth thermos, I mean, I would just could just dump this in a wide mouth thermos and then after I'm there, add the hot water and let it sit in there and it gives me something to fix it in and be able to eat. Uh, these can be thrown into uh, a bag, a Ziploc bag for camping or for traveling, or you can make like for someone that just could use some meals, um, just take some nice little jars and just make like one or two serving type meals in a little jar and have it be as a gift or just something to help somebody out. There's a lot of different possibilities. Okay, now I boiled some water here. 
I have to make sure you notice that these, these go together. <laughs> yeah. But I'm going to go ahead and... Now, at this point, um, I know I'm not being really specific, but I'm just going to make sure there's enough water in there to be really floating above it. Um, I, it just depends on what, what you want to put in there and how thick you want the soup to be. There we go. And just push the ingredients down into the water. And of course our boiling cube will be dissolving in the hot water. Now in terms of salt and pepper, um, I really don't want to give a measurement because it depends on how much you like. So season it to taste the way that you like it. But I do kind of like to have a little bit of salt in the water because it um, like soaks in a little bit of the salt when they're refreshing. And well, because I want to be really precise, as soon as this is ready and I come back, I'll tell you how long it took. Ah. I'm gonna make some tea. And I am a little bit like Captain Jean-Luc Picard, because I love Earl Grey hot. <laughs> My uh, daughter-in-law and Carly got me that basket for Christmas one year. And I love using it for my teas. I've got this beautiful hot water already, so I might as well use it. Oh, I love bergamot. Mm, lovely. Oop, a couple of my bowls fell over, I'll get them. I will enjoy this with the soup, which is oh, smelling so good and just about ready. All right, it's been, oh, right now about nine minutes, and I just tested, and I think this meat is starting to get nice and soft, and the bouillon is now, you know, giving a lovely color to the water. So I say you could figure on having it ready in about 10 minutes. Um, if you feel like that it needs more time, if, you know, if the meat hasn't gotten really tender, give it a little bit longer with the hot water or just pop it in the microwave for 30 seconds. And gonna hurt a thing, it would just kind of help it move along a little bit. But I think that um, about 10 minutes is pretty realistic. I really do. This looks wonderful. Here's my tea, which I'm gonna put the tea bag in here. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to have people saying, how can you leave Bill out? How terrible. There he is, working the camera and you're not feeding him. Well, the whole purpose of this was to show how easy it is to make one very nice serving for lunch. Isn't that a beautiful lunch? Um, and <clears throat> I promise we'll make Bill some too. And he'll get to eat and he can welcome to test mine. So let's see what it tastes like, okay? Good. Lord, thank you for how you bless us and for this food. May it be to our nourishment. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm. Mm. I didn't put much salt, so I'm going to add a little bit more. You don't know sometimes until you really taste it. And of course, the, the combination of ingredients or how much bouillon you'd want to use or anything like that is entirely up to you. Another wonderful, kind of like, trade secret, I don't know how to put it exactly, but another wonderful thing is that if you've got some meat and you've got this powder at the bottom where it is kind of crumbled into powder, man, is that wonderful to put in broth. It just gives this great, rich flavor to it. So that's a nice little hint. You can do that with fruit powder on yogurt. There's tons of stuff you can do with those powders. Alrighty. Well, 
I've got myself a lovely little bowl of soup here. I'm going to enjoy it. Mm. Mm. So that was yummy. And I um, I know that maybe if somebody wants, they could throw it in a little pot on the stove and it would cook up real quickly. Just simmer it. Just simmer it, yeah. It would go very, very quickly. That was fun having some nice hot boiling water all ready to make tea after I made my soup. That was really nice. And one of the things I've realized in terms of um, not wasting is that not only can you make exactly the amount of food you need so you don't have stuff sitting leftovers in the fridge turning into biological experiments, which happens to all of us, um, because you, you, it, it, nowadays, if I have leftovers, it's because I deliberately plan them and they're gonna get eaten the next day. So they sit in the fridge long enough to get eaten the next day. Um, but the other thing is that you just simply don't have to have food sitting in the fridge that is gonna go bad. Um, celery that gets all limp, mushrooms that get all slimy. Um, there's this, I just end up throwing so many things away. These will stay very good on the shelf, not needing refrigeration. And then you just use what you need. So Bill has said this before and it's true. The most expensive food you will ever buy is a food you have to throw away. Right. And so it's, um, <clears throat> you know, it's really nice to know that I will have what I need, but I'm not gonna be trying to figure out what to do with a whole bunch of leftovers. I mean, so yeah, I've, I've really found it to be the case. Yeah. And the other financial benefit that I want to talk about was the inflation fighter because Thrive Life has a 25 year shelf life. And to be honest, that's what they certify 25 years. But to be honest, it's probably going to be a lot longer than that. Yeah, they, they definitely can certify this. And we're talking about still being, um, you know, nutritious and right. delicious and nice looking, you know. In order for food to spoil, it has to have three things. It has to have heat, it has to have moisture, and it has to have oxygen. And when they do the freeze drying, they take out all the moisture when it's done and they put it in the can, it has 0.07% moisture left. Wow. Not 7%, 0.07%. That's less than 1% of moisture is left. They less also- than, Less than one tenth of 1%. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, and then they, they vacuum seal it into a heavy duty can that's not gonna leak. So there's no oxygen and there's no moisture. So it virtually can't spoil. Um, so 25 years, easy, maybe longer than that. So here's the deal. How much did we used to spend on groceries 25 years ago? Oh, not a fraction of what it is. No, I mean, you mentioned $80 for two weeks. Oh yeah, I can easily remember going to the commissary. We were military and I would have about $80 that I could spend and I could feed us with the small children. That, that was could, with four of us. Um, and the, you know, the kids were younger then, but I could feed us for two weeks on an um, average of $40 a yeah. week. And now with just the two of us, if I go to the store just to get milk, eggs, and bread, honestly, it's almost 80 bucks. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it's crazy. It feels that way. It's crazy. You know, I just thought of another thing that's nice with having the Thrive Life food is if you have enough around to cook, you're going to be less likely to go to the store to get like one ingredient. That's and right. Whoever walks out of the store with only the one thing you went there to buy. So especially if you live a few miles away, you're going to be spending gas. You're going to be wasting time. You're going to have the, that horrible thing called impulse buying. Yeah. You always walk out with 10 items when you only planned on one. Yeah. So that's another way to save. <laughs> but let's look at inflation. Let's yes. look at let's look at this chart of what $20 would buy in 1998 and 2005 and 2023. And this is actually pretty sobering yes and i think it's pretty accurate incredible and so if you invest the money right now you're going to have it for a long time as the inflation brings the prices up you bought it at the lower price yeah so for instance if you are 50 and you buy some thrive life food it's still going to be good when you're 75. it's still going to be good after you retire when Theoretically, most people have a lot lower income after they retire. So you can buy it now while you have a higher income and then you've got it available when you have a lower income. And it's just gonna be much, a much, it's a good investment for, for inflation fighting for the future. Yeah. Goodness, by the time we were really starting to get some Thrive Life food around, I was like in my early 60s. 
So that means I'm going to have food till I'm 85. That's right. <laughs> that's really that's really something. And that's counting the stuff that was bought you know, seven, eight years ago. And, you know, I wanted to do a video about the inflation fighting uh, benefits several years ago when the inflation was low. But now we have serious inflation yeah. in the past few years, as you guys know. And I don't see it ending anytime soon. Yeah. In fact, I see more troubling times ahead, and I don't want to even get into all of that. And so anything that you buy now is going to last you for 25 years or more and get you through some of these rough times and uh, save you a lot of money in the long run. And I don't want to get into all the, the whys and hows and all that, but with the growth that Thrive Life is going through um, and everything that they've been doing, even though they're still really, really picky about the kind of food that they're willing to work with, um, very high quality standards, they have actually overall, you know, over the, all the different foods, been able to keep the prices steady or actually gone down right. during this high inflation time. And um, so I appreciate that. You know. Well, basically, Thrive Life has been growing so fast that they buy much larger um, lots of food, much larger you know, shipments of food. Yeah. And so because they buy in larger quantity, they can get lower prices than they used to. Now, of course, they're not competing with what Walmart buys, but yeah. they're getting lower prices than they used to, which means that as, every, as inflation is going up elsewhere, because they're getting lower prices than they used to, they're able to keep their prices the same. Yeah. They've had very insignificant price raises over the past several years. A couple of things have gone up, a couple of things have actually gone down, so it's just about maintained. Yeah. So, yeah, that was very good soup. Yes. He got to eat too, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't leave him out. <laughs> so anyway, I, I just hear so many people say, how can you exp buy that and use it all the time? It's so expensive. Well, we just showed you. It's not, really. Yeah. It's not. Well, you have to realize you're kind of basically buying bulk. So, um, you know, if you um, are going to buy more at one time, it's going to cost more. But then, it, of course, lasts longer. Right. Yeah. So I hope that's been enlightening. I hope you've enjoyed that. It was nice cooking with you, dumping things out of little bowls. Yeah. <laughs> That was a very easy cooking video. <laughs> so okay. anyway, thanks for watching. Yeah, live simple. Live free. You be blessed. And we will, of course, be back soon. We love you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>